Hello and welcome, not as usual, to the Geek Lab, but the great outdoors, because today I'm going to do something different. I'm going to review a car, something I've always wanted to do, but this is not just any old press bucket off the street. This is my car. So, let's uh, see how good I am at reviewing, if any. Could be interesting. So, what we actually have here in the beautiful settings of this uh, industrial estate, complete with nothing. Garbage at the back there. Sorry, I did want to do this up the mountains, but as you can hear, it's windy, and I did try to learn way too windy. So, this I'll have to do. What we have is a 2012 Vauxhall Insignia. Uh, this is an SRI with the 19 inch alloy wheels, and it is 165 brake horsepower, I believe. You may want to correct me on that, but I've been told that that is when it is. So, first of all, we'll take a look around the outside and the features there. We'll then go on the inside and have a look at what we can see there. And then we'll start her up and have a drive around and see what we think. So, first of all, let's have a look at the outside. Now, as you can see here, the insignia is a five-door hatchback. So the insignia has xenon headlights and little fog lights at the bottom of the nice chrome trim there, which is a nice touch. I do like the chrome grille. I find on some makes they can really overdo it, but this is subtle. I prefer this to the one that replaced it uh, just after this one was built. Uh, same on the other side, obviously. 19 inch alloy wheels on this one with the low profile tyres. Does make the ride a little bit bumpy around town but when it comes into its own is when you're in the countryside and the handling is excellent. So down the side you've got the two doors there with the lovely chrome trim around the windows I like that and the black bit to make it almost look like it's frameless. Uh, there's nothing fancy on the door opening it's just traditional do, do, do. no keyless entry here fuel cap is there and that's the rear alloy obviously there's the rear hatch with its wiper and this lovely light which sweeps along the flow of the car now this was extended further in the refresh one a little bit later but I actually prefer this one uh, this has rear parking sensors as well I believe there was an option for two rear parking sensors this one has the four and I love how the chrome goes across the back there to connect the two sides of the car and the brake light just under the very very subtle spoiler and around the other side it does have quite a large overhang over the wheels there on the rear front it is not so bad but that rear overhang is huge but I like it it's well designed uh, the wing mirrors are heated and electric controlled. The only criticism I have of these is there's a plastic ridge that goes underneath them and this does cause a little bit of wind noise when you open the window. You can't hear it when the window is shut but when you open the window, let some air in, you do hear it. Right. More of a traditional key here with just the open and close, that's it, and the flip blade thingy. See the heat shimmer there with the car being out of focus, good isn't it? Uh, so with the there we go. So, let's do the old traditional line. Let's uh, open her up and let's see what we got on the inside. Shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. Right, down the right side of the car and the best seat in the house, of course, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the driver's seat. With it being an English car, it's on the right hand side, which is the right hand side. Okay, the door trim, and starting at the top, it's all soft touch plastic. You've got this uh, effect wood trim, which is just black, and I like it. It doesn't have any grain or anything. I think it's supposed to be sort of wood, but I like that. Uh, the power mirror controls, turn it that way for the right hand side, that way for the left, and a chrome ha door handle, nice. This 
from here is I not sure I think it is metal but it does have a rubber back and this section here is rubberized this is plastic and here are your window controls the windows in the back are manual which is a bit of a disappointment but there we go uh, and the bottom you've got big door bins as you step in you've got this Vauxhall sign in chrome which is a nice little touch they didn't have to do that moving in the seats are very comfortable uh, from an SRI this was a concern when we bought this car because I'd used a coarser SRI before and I found the seats very narrow and uh, constraining but this doesn't suffer from that on the driver's side it's got this lovely sorry for my shadow there <coughs> this section pulls forwards and backwards to adjust behind your legs and got manual up and down sorry manual tilt and electric up and down and electric lumbar support which is something I actually didn't find uh, until a few days after we bought the vehicle while we're down here it does have although mine a little bit dirty the sports chrome pedals which is nice aftermarket mats in this one let's have a look up at that dashboard okay and inside the car well, let's start over here here you have your auto light controls you can go manual or auto and you've got two buttons for the front and rear fog lights this controls uh, the angle of the lights and this controls the brightness of the displays within the vehicle traditional uh, ignition on this one um, the dials you've got your trip your speed a little trip computer which I'll show you in a moment when it's started up and up there you've got your water temperature sorry your fuel and your water temperature on the steering wheel itself which is leather wrapped a sports steering wheel it's nice with the there we go horn in the middle you've got on the right hand side this controls the volume of your audio using this you can change like CD tracks radio stations this is your voice it either activates your phone or activates the voice control in the car. Mine doesn't pair to phone, so this activates the voice control. Over this side, you've got your cruise control. This puts the cruise control on and off. Once you get to the speed, push this down and it will hold the speed. If you change speed, because this doesn't have uh, radar, cruise control and all that. Once you've changed the speed, if you want to resume the speed, press it up and it goes. This cancels it as well. Uh, moving over, we shall show you the sat-nav in a second. You've got the controls for the sat-nav. You've got the uh, controls for the climate control down here, all surrounded by the wood again. You've got a 12 volt socket and Thor's hammer, because wifey has nicknamed this car Mew Mew Thor's hammer. So we've got a little Thor's hammer in there. Coming down, you've got this chrome trim just around the front of the gear stick here, which is rather nice. And the gear stick has this rather nice effect of the numbers being below the plastic there. I do like that, and it's leather wrapped around the front too. Very nice. There's a small silver button there, which you have to press to put it in reverse. Coming down here, you've got some more controls for the sat nav and audio. So you get nav, audio, uh, voice command, and your nav. Destination, your destination on the back. This twists and you can push it as well to select things. You've got the e-brake. Yes, my favorite little feature. Because when you stop, pull this up and your brake comes on. You then don't have to release it. You can press this down to release it. But if you just pull off as normal, this will release the brake automatically. There have been two occasions when I've driven this car. I've pulled it to a stop and I thought that the e-brake was on. It wasn't, and when I got out, it rolled backwards. So always check your little red light is on on the dash. If you've had a similar thing, let me know, especially if it's been uh, disastrous, because uh, I just assume that is quite a common thing. Down here, behind this little door, is cup holders, which are very good, because they have these little things, so they can adjust to your cup size. I like that design. And then back here, is the center armrest which has the USB stick in here for the audio 
There's a cable down there. That's just like putting down there. And a little room for your phone down there. And here is another 12 volt socket down there. Uh, an optional extra fitted to this particular vehicle is this one here. You can see it, a little switch there. That is for the uh, front parking sensors. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the rear seat through this rather large opening door. Although, tall passengers will have to be careful of this. Although, I've been in here a few times myself, never had trouble knocking that. So, let's have a look what we get in here. Okay, just like the front one, the rear, you've got the soft touch plastics at the top and the chrome door handle. Same design down here, the rubberized effect here, all material here and nice big door bin here. Well, relatively big and windy windows. What's that about? Well, I suppose in one respect they are good because that allows you uh, to escape if you end up in the river very rare occasion but yeah never know so let's uh, go inside and have a look inside uh, inside here you have back pockets on both seats uh, each passenger has their own ventilation system here although there's only one sensor thing so uh, you've got to argue over whether you want it on or off so that's unfortunate uh, Yep, you have a centre armrest, two cup holders with the squishy design. I shall call them the squishy design. And here is a little thing for containing whatever. It'll have to be small and thin, but whatever. And back here, locked at the moment, but you've got a ski hatch so skis can come through here. Now, I know that a lot of people complain about headroom in here, and yeah, if you were to hit the side, it's a nice cushion actually, it's nice cushion. But for most people, I'm sitting here and I'm five foot in a dog end, I sit comfortably. If you're six foot odd, yeah, you're probably going to be knocking your head on the top of that. But, but for the majority of people, I suspect this will be fine. Right, next, let's have a look at the cavernous boot. Now, being a mere mortal, I do not know the actual size of this but let's just say it's huge and with this being a UK spec there is no release mechanism on the inside because we don't go around locking each other in boots no 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 and if I put those back seats down you do get a lot more space although you don't get a flat ledge there but because I don't uh, tend to cart around wardrobes that's not a factor for me in the rear of the vehicle you do get this little cargo net which is very handy a little storage space because I'm a bit OCD about cleanliness in my car so that is handy you also have eye hooks all over the place some there and there's some back here so you can strap cargo down which is another good touch there's even some on the back of the seats now, I believe this is a standard, but when you lift the back up, you don't get a traditional spare tyre. You get a blow-up kit. Uh, I would like to get a proper spare tyre one day, because if you use that blow-up kit on your tyre, it's screwed. You're uh, going to have to get a new tyre. Whereas, if you've got a spare, you can put your dead one in here, and there's a chance it could be repaired. So... Okay, and this is just me being nerdy, but uh, nice little touch. A lot of cars, these are open, but push that, and it's a little door that goes to the hook to lock the boot down. So, nice little touch there. Right, and I think it's time for the passenger side. And with the passenger side, it's exactly the same as the other one. Uh, this one does show a bit of a flaw in the rubber system here, because it can peel off. And just a note, if you go to Poundland and you see these Tango things, don't buy them. They are friggin' useless. They don't have, they don't last five minutes. Rubbish! So, inside we have uh, the chair. Obviously, a very handy thing to have a chair. Mm. And uh, this just has tilt control and slide control. Doesn't have uh, lumbar support or the extending seat base. This does have curtain airbags as well as front airbags. And... 
Ta-da! There you go. Plenty of room in the glove box. Right, I'm back to the interior and uh, let's just fire up the ignition so we can have a look at these displays working. And there you go, it runs through a full check. And da -da, there's our central computer type thingy. Now, trip computer. Now, on this setting, it shows you speed, how many miles you've got to a refill, and your gallons per hour and your total mileage. If you flick this switch once, you get a single trip computer uh, showing you how many miles you've done, your average miles per gallon, and your miles per hour. That is way down at the moment because I've been going through the hills. Uh, and you've got two of them. There's my longer term one. And if you go past that, you've got navigation. So your navigation arrows will appear on here when it's in use. And back around. If you press this menu button, boink, you've got your oil life remaining. Uh, your speed warnings, you can set it to let you know when you hit certain speeds and you can set your units, imperial, metric, whatever you want and then it goes back to there and back to there now in the middle we have the infotainment system which has sat nav uh, the radio, uh, CD, uh, phone connectivity I'm not going to go through that because there is a separate video but just to let you know if I do switch this on uh, if I go CD I'll do. This does have Yeah, hard house there, sorry. Uh, it does have an incredible sound system. And down below you've got your you've got your climate control. Uh, this is the air conditioning off, circulation, front defrost, so it sends all the air through there, through the front. Uh, rear heating, fan speed, uh, temperature, and I do like the fact you've got down, front, and up. And when you change these settings, it doesn't just switch all straight away, it moves slowly, so it's quite dignified and it's you know, gives you a feel of quality. I like that. And the auto setting, which is basically the climate control, and it will get the, the, uh, the air to the temperature you want without you having to fiddle with all these. An interesting thing to note is, uh, although you get the handles as traditional in the passenger position, most cars don't usually have anything in the driver position. Whereas Vauxhall, or GM, have put a sunglasses case there, which is different. Nicely sprung too. In the centre console of the roof, you've got these movement sensors for the alarm. Uh, on off to deactivate the movement sensors if you've got like animals in then you've got light controls and the visors even have their own lights hello and that is on both sides of the car so do not fear if you're the passenger you get this service too and for the rear you get these courtesy lights which are Got the door open at the moment, but when it's shut, these are switchable and one for each side. That's nice. Okay, the time has come. Let us fire up. Now you have to press the clutch down on these before they'll start, and then this is with the door open. There we go. So if I shut the door, see it's much quieter. Although these vehicles, as I found in most car reviews, the uh, engine sounds louder on the camber than it does in real life. So go to quick. Doesn't have a high rev limit. And mine does that mooing sound. Which is uh, to do with the dump valve, there's a pipe that vibrates. It's, uh, it's nothing uh, unusual. Nothing's gonna kill it, so not worried about that.
Right, and here's the engine as discussed earlier, it's 165, very coarse power, uh, 2 litre TDI diesel thing. So, let's see this thing start up. So enough chattering on about this thing, let's get it on the road and see what it's like. Experience. We can just pull off here on this uh, lovely road here in the Pennines in England and it's got the auto brake so you don't have to worry about hill starts because the auto brake automatically comes off. That's why it's called an auto brake. And uh, accelerating away, I'm not going to accelerate too hard around here because sheep, this is sheep city, this is where they all live and they all dart out in front of you. Uh, but acceleration is brisk if you put your foot down it's just fry here a little bit it's a nice constant acceleration and uh, before you know it you're in the land of uh, police coming to get you uh, we'll be careful here because it's cheap as usual but yes first gear i think this is the thing with diesels in general first gear appears to be quite short uh, but the rest of the gears once you're in second gear the power comes on and uh, it accelerates away nicely on roads like this is what this is what the SRA is built for the yeah, roads like this long sweeping fast roads once you get into town that hard suspension uh, shows its weaknesses it can become rather bumpy but out here on these roads and on motorways in general uh, it's a very comfortable calm car uh, Upside as well is that it's a very confident car on roads like this. Right, we're back onto the smooth road, and uh, as you can hear, the wind. This is a rather windy day, and no, wind levels are very muted, and tyre tyre roll is minimal. When you consider this is sitting on 19-inch alloys, I put it in fifth. You may be quiet. Uh, the engine itself, yes, when you're accelerating, uh, it's uh, it's not loud. It's uh, what do we say? Eager to make you hear it's there, but it's nothing. No, it's nothing that's gonna spoil your day. Let's listen. There we go. And the turbo noise is uh, very muted, so. Uh, Chill, yes, rather relaxing as long as you're on roads like this. In the, in the town, it does get a little bit firm, which, uh, yes, can at times be a bit uncomfortable, but it's a trade off, uh, especially when you're not got air suspension or anything fancy like that. But this is more of a, you know, a driver's car, apart from the steering wheel. I will say that the steering wheel does not provide feedback. At all. It is dead muted, uh, but it is responsive, it does the job well, and you can uh, steer with confidence with it. It's nicely weighted, uh, although being the electric version, it does have, I have noticed a few times, some people have complained about this, that sometimes it will start to overcorrect, and you're turning in and it'll suddenly decide to start turning sharper, which I've heard that people overcorrect and cause problems, so you've got to watch out for that if you're going to be using, if you're driving this this car.
So, the 2012 Vauxhall Insignia SRI. Any good? Well, if you're after a large family car that's going to be frugal on the fuel and carry five in comfort, be well built, then this is your car. If you're after something to potter around town, then maybe not this. It's going to be a bit, a little bit hard on the suspension. But other than that, I'm really enjoying it so far, and uh, yeah, it's good. So, if you enjoy videos like this, then please subscribe. And why not join us on our social media, Facebook and Twitter. Links found down below. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope to make more of these if I can collaborate with anybody local who has a suitable vehicle. And uh, yes, thanks for watching.